Good. Okay, so let's welcome our next guest, hey our guys. amazing rhythm champions, Detra and Bree. How are you guys? We're good. How are you guys? How are you guys? Good to see you. Nice to see you too. We're very good guys. Uh, how is life in Arizona right now? Oh, today is going to be 111 or in Celsius, I don't know, 45, <laughs> something like that. It's uh, really hot, but uh, we're staying inside of the, the studio. Thank God the studio is open. So we're happy that we can teach some of our students. Of course, not everybody feel comfortable coming back yet, but it's okay. At least a couple of them are back. Little by so, little, slowly coming back. Yeah, little by little. And as you know, Mary, one of our students, Mary, in yeah. Paul City work, you know, Mary was like, such a loss. I heard that Slavik and Mirana will be in Poland. Such a loss for the United States. And I was like, I know. I'm going to talk to them and ask them what's happening with why they're leaving us. <laughs> no, yes. So this is unfortunate. I think uh, a coincidence that we had to close our studio because of the COVID. The studio has been shut down for almost four months. And our landlord did not help us at all. Instead of helping, they rose our fees from July 1st. So no. fortunately, we can't afford paying those huge bills. It's almost nine and a half thousand dollars per month uh, to stay open. And with such a little uh, amount of teachers that came back to teach right now, it, unfortunately, we, we can't, had, afford, we we can't afford, afford to it. stay open. Mm. But we're still hoping that sooner or later we can come back to U.S. Right. Uh, obviously, right now, the, the, the boards in Poland are still being closed and we can't fly. The flights are being canceled all the time. So hopefully... Uh, so at least we, we're trying to do what we can from Paul and we're still trying to get connected with everyone. We're still trying to run the camp, which we are very useful that you were one of the great teachers who decided to, you know, teach, join us, join us and, and teach online. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, we love it. Yes. So uh, talking about the camp, uh, how, was the in, how was the experience of filming those classes for you guys? Well, I feel like it's always interesting when you have to record anything. And, and there's no one. You're just talking to a camera. It's kind of like, okay, we, what I'm doing? <laughs> we definitely had our moments. And I look back and I'm like, oh, we should have saved all of this for another blooper reel. Uh, it was rather entertaining. <laughs> one of the videos, guys, one of the videos, I forgot which class was it, salsa or I don't remember, swing. It took us 10, 10 times to record it. 10 times to record it. It was like, one after the other one, and Bri had her buggy there. He comes and go through the camera and lay down. You had your doggy coming uh, to the to the floor, and he was sitting while you guys were dancing, right? Yeah. So I could I couldn't do anything. Like he just, he just wanted, came back. He just wanted to be like right there, center stage. So. And and one time we were one time we were discussing rumba. I think was discussing, and Emma wanted to go to a pool party with her friend. And she's in the studio. It's only three of us. And Emma is like, guys, guys, less talking, more dancing. <laughs> <laughs> she's five years old. She's five years old. She wanted to go to the pool party. And we we're like, okay, just a little bit more. And we've been already there an hour or two. And she's like, less talking and more dancing, guys. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's what the students want, right? Even as a five-year-old, she preferred that you dance more instead of right. <laughs> talk. Yeah. <laughs> that's like from right. Emma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of funny, but it was good. It was good. It took us a while to get it done. And some of the classes, like, you know, we had to teach a little bit and she was busy. So time coordination was up and sometimes there was somebody in the studio and they playing the music loud so we wanted to do it not in the house we wanted to do it in the studio to live to be a little more professional you know with the floor and yeah. everything so you know it took us a couple of weeks i mean to do it. honestly it's been a challenge like in having to teach from your home you know it, it's i don't know it's a little bit different than being in the studio so we definitely wanted to have that but you've done some classes on from your house right yeah it's just not the same you know you just you feel out of like out of space in a way you know but i maybe that's part of our new normal i don't know yeah. well, hope, no, oh, we hope, hope no. so 
but uh, yes, we, we loved your videos. They were very professional. We picked on them a little bit, you know, obviously we couldn't watch all of them because there's almost 150 classes to watch, to but at guys. least we wanted to take a little bit moment and we, we are so grateful for your uh, professionalism and uh, the knowledge that you guys have passed. So uh, in your opinion, what students could gain from those videos uh, since they have access to them for almost a year? I mean, really so much. I mean, there's so much information, I think, that's presented in each in each video, and you're covering so many different dances. I mean, the fact that they'll have access to it for a whole year in comparison to when, when we normally do camp, you know, they get the information in that moment, and it, unless they're taking notes, it's so easy to forget. Or Even if they purchase the video later, it's, it's kind of the video, it's a short version of what's happened, the it, whole class. Yeah, it's so condensed that I don't really know that they're able to really gather that much information from the videos that we do towards the end of camp as a review in comparison to this. I mean, this is really more like a lesson that they can, you know, just go back and constantly review. And I would imagine, you know, even in hearing it the first time, you're missing so many things. So being able to go back and look at it again, you're going to gain so much each time. Oh, yeah. I and it's just so awesome because there are so many teachers, you know, so many teachers, so many classes, so many, you know, different thoughts and ideas, and maybe they're being said in different ways, but generally everybody's saying the same thing. So it's just good to hear, you know, all of that different information, I think. I yeah. think that would be great that those, those information be so complementing each other, hearing, like you said, from different teachers. So, so once they hear something from other teachers, they go back to your video and they might understand things a little bit different or better. Right. So I think, yes, it's going to be very useful. So Because the information, you know, it's, it's close. Everybody just explaining slightly different. You know, it, we are not too far away from each other. It's just how you say it. And you got Polish accent. I have Bulgarian accent. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they understand her more. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's funny. Right. <laughs> so that you're talking about accents, obviously uh, we know you came from Bulgaria. Uh, what year did you move to America and what was your first job in the US? Well, um, I moved 2003 and I started straight uh, on the next day to Fred Astaire Dance Studio <laughs> here in Phoenix. So I didn't have another job. I'm so not handy. I, I don't even know how to turn a light bulb. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't know how to dance. <laughs> well, you're, you're a true artist, right? <laughs> uh, that's what I've been doing 35 years. Oh, my gosh. But anyway, yeah, I came straight and started teaching, um, you know, dancing. And um, you three should, months. You should, tell them, you should tell them what you told the, the one student with, with, with his wonderful, I mean, he didn't know any English. But... I didn't know any English. And after a couple of months, I pick it up some words, and you know. And um, <laughs> one of the managers was there, or two of the students. You guys students. were like in a dance or something, right? We were dancing, dancing something, and um, I wanted to do a split, but I didn't know the word split. And I was like, and she, she was a pretty nice woman, and she, I said, can you fall down and open your legs? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody started laughing because I was like, whoa, what? Open your legs, open your legs. But I kind of started getting more and more. You know, when they don't understand me, I start yelling at almost, <laughs> and everybody laughs. There's probably many ladies wanted to book lessons with you, right? <laughs> I was wondering why I'm so booked and tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So uh, I remember, I think we met you guys at the Phoenix uh, competition galaxy that right. used to be uh, owned by um, oh, Jack. Paul Jack, yes. yes. And we, we, we did still 10 dance. You guys did rhythm at that time. I think it was like 2005, 2006. And that was our very first time when you guys, when we met you uh, mm -hmm. in the US. Right. Uh, I think we were working. Oh my gosh, 10 years we know each other. I remember you two guys. Yeah, I think we were working, we were walking, walking to the par right. to parking yes. lot and we were about to leave to California and we were just chatting. We were driving, with you guys. Right yes, yeah. So it was, oh, yeah, yeah. So we, it's a long time. But I never knew that story about the student. Yeah. <laughs> we will. We should make this as a promotion for the next year mastery camp. You probably yeah. already booked. <laughs> open your leg. Can you fall down and open your leg? <laughs> so, uh, Brie, obviously you were born in America, right? 
Yes. Uh, what was your first job in the U.S. that? Uh... <laughs> well, within the business, or just well, in general? Happen, no, the very first job that you had. <laughs> I actually worked for my dad. I was uh, a little receptionist, and so I take phone calls, and I was terrible, but you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, it was after fun. That? Um, after that, it was teaching. I I had moved to Knoxville, and I started teaching, and it was interesting. That's all I'm gonna say. You know, because of the background that I come from, you know, with dance and growing up, and kind of. Ballet. you know doing ballet and tap and jazz all of that the studios are very different than ballroom mm -hmm. you know and um also pricing <laughs> pricing is very different <laughs> in, in comparison you know to ballroom. yeah and so it was honestly in being a teacher it was very shocking to me because i i was not expecting we, we are you know, <laughs> So I think that was the biggest thing that I honestly struggled with is trying to like wrap my head around so, how it could be so expensive because I had grown up my whole life and, you know, of course I didn't have to pay for it, but I know it wasn't as expensive for me to do all that I was doing as it was for maybe like, you know, a couple of lessons a week. So, you know, it was, it was an eye opener, especially at that time because I was young, you know, 19 or so, so. Anyway, we went for and to Arizona. We met in Arizona in 2003, a couple of months when I arrived. And she was begging me for six months to dance. And I said, no, I'm not dancing. It's so expensive. Like, I have no money. I have to save for my green card. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't think it was that long. I think it was long. <laughs> well, it sounds good, right? <laughs> <It's my> <laughs> I felt so good. <laughs> I felt special, like, <laughs> no, it wasn't, it wasn't a couple of months, but the reason why is like, I was like, no, I just came to the country and I know how much it costs to get ready your green card and you know, everything else. But um, after a couple of months, we started dancing and we had no idea. We, we put routines for, you know, a month and we went to a, one competition in New Jersey and the second one was Ohio. And we went to Ohio and I was like, oh my gosh, like what I'm doing here? <laughs> there was like a strong. How did how did Ohio go for you guys for the first time? Oh my gosh! It was um, it was like it was like overwhelming yeah. because I know you know the the Batal Hall you know on Friday night when there's so many people and you know so I was like wow what I'm doing here we're not ready <laughs> yeah. but we passed one round so we made a check quarterfinal I think so we were like yay <laughs> so you wanted to go back that's what is the, the case about the hire right you go there you always want to go back and dance again right oh yeah we've yeah. been we've been there for 17 years I can't believe like every oh, year I feel special you know yes. like it really is I feel like I don't know I feel like of all the comps here it's it's I don't know. It's yeah. something special. I feel like, I don't know if it's because it's towards the end of the year or just so many people. So many like, people. I think that I is think the, the energy. The energy in the, the ballroom is amazing, yeah, right? It and yeah. you Without all the way it's up like that, you know. Yeah. It was more like in Europe when we competed in Europe, right? Most of the. Yeah. Yes. With yeah. The yeah. More like in Europe. Around. So, and the audience is so appreciative over there, right? They are not bored. Yeah. They are not trying to get out to make sure that they get their car out from the parking before everybody else right. they are, <laughs> they're actually staying and watching till the end and uh, how many times did we end over there at the one o'clock in the morning and the audience is still, still there back, especially yeah. when we you guys did a battle of the champions as us right on the end and it's still people are waiting and they are applauding uh mm. the couple so it you feel very appreciated at ohio star ball we totally agree right. with you guys right. Yeah. Did you do it? Did you do it two, three years ago uh, when um, did the you know, Sam and Michael before. did the, what is it called, uh, the first yeah. time? Yeah, the first time. We did the 40th yes. anniversary. Yeah. I think you guys were I with us. Did did. We did it. And, you know, it was it's still, was really special. it was really special because, you know, how they decorated and the state and everything. And, um, you know, when they turned the lights, and rem reminds me when we started dancing in the beginning when we made the final and we had to do a show and when they turn off the lights, the spotlight and you're the only one, I was like, oh man, 
it feels so loopy, like you don't know where you are because there is no light. Yes, exactly. exactly. I yeah. remember a couple of times Swavik was actually very lost. We did some kind of lift yeah. in the middle. Yeah, and I he remember was, the lift. And, and like he was like, where is the front? The stage, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we felt, but it was fun. It was really good. And you guys had some amazing uh, highlights yeah, in your sorry, career. Yeah. Uh, can you share with us, uh, obviously, uh, besides winning the US and world title, we saw that you guys did some amazing performance in Blackpool. Can you guys share if all the most spectacular moments from your career? Hmm. That was so much work. I had such a big <laughs> muscles. Oh my gosh, for a year, I was lifting Brie up and down, up and down, up and down. It was exhausting. It was exhausting. It was amazing it was job. Amazing. I'm like, wow. Yeah. I'm like, look at this spectacular moment in your career to be invited to do a show right. in Blackpool. See, yeah, honestly, that was, that was well, we, really special. We, were, we became 2007 uh, Theater Arts Champions. And because we became the champion the next year, they invite us to do a, you know, a exhibition, exhibition in, in, they invite only seven couples, I think. Yeah, in the world. So we were one of them and we were like, yeah, let's do it. And I didn't know how much work we need to put it. <laughs> we were Michael Chapman did the routine and we were like working every day. It was like three minutes. The show was, the, the was, routine was so three long, minutes and yeah. 30 seconds or something. And you, as you know, three minutes and 30 seconds, it's a lot of time. Yes. Yeah. To so, it, was, it was very special. It was definitely a special moment. In Blackpool, all the judges were there, like all the champions, the previous sitting down, Dolly yeah. Burke, Marcus Hilton, all these people, and they're waiting and we're coming out with Bree. It's like, they don't even know who we are probably, but. <laughs> <laughs> it was very nerve wracking though, you know, like it was cool to have to have that floor and have the space like all to yourself but you know thank god all the lights were out you know that's all i have to say thank god i didn't drop brie and embarrass myself <laughs> <laughs> with my hair that would have been a disaster <laughs> i'm sure you would have remembered even better right <laughs> oh. Yeah. He, he only dropped me, I think, one time, and it wasn't. In a practice, it wasn't really even that bad. Like, it I wasn't on the show. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how he saved it, but he had me up this way, and my head's like going that way, and somehow I just went tumbling down. Let me not give you any ideas on the dance camp. We are not doing theater arts, just to let you know <laughs> next year. <laughs> no, we don't want to oh, theater theater arts. Arts. I don't think they can give us insurance yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a liability. Yeah, so, besides uh, that one, what, which one were the, the biggest highlights of your career? Sorry, say that again. Besides Blackpool. What else? What, what else? else? I think I would say winning our first title. It was, was really, 2011 USDC when we won the first time. I think that was probably very the special. Most, yeah, the most special. We felt good. We felt like really like really that's what it needs to happen. I felt it in, inside of me that <laughs> you know this is the time. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. This is ten years I've been waiting. Yeah. Yes. Ten years, so. Isn't that amazing how the, you you're so proud of your first title and then later on you you only I don't know how about you guys, but for us it was trying to keep proof that we deserve to stay on that first place. So, right? yeah, but we always said at first that we, we, if we win, we're not going to work so much anymore. But actually, every year we kept working harder. We take more lessons. I just work more. The pressure, right? So to prove it, like Mishnah said, that you deserve to be a champion. So it was, it was hard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and of course, the biggest title for us, well, for me, I don't know, for you, it's... Uh, Emma, our daughter. Yeah. This is the biggest I, title. I was actually going to say that. I mean, more than anything, I mean, yeah, you look at your career, but when you say, like, what's your greatest achievement, it, I don't know. I look at her, and for me, like, she's our greatest achievement, so. She's That's always with us. Check it out. Check it out, that cutie. <laughs> that she's cute. So, cute. so how old is she now? Be three months, she's going to be six. I can't believe. I can't believe. You guys, yeah, because we were, we were pregnant at the same time because Natalia will be, our daughter will be six in July. So yeah. you guys were That's right so after good. us. It was like you and then uh, Svieta. We did, uh, we all kind of uh, planned right, this right. <laughs> around the yes, same time. <laughs> that was weird. 
Yeah, that's awesome. So guys, tell us something that people might not know about you guys in a person or as a couple. Well, we, we, we kind of like a more private. Um, I don't like to post a lot of pictures and telling anything about too much. She's the one with Facebook and posting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like so I don't know maybe it's a girly thing I don't know maybe because we I didn't grow up with internet and all this information as a kid so and you know I kind of keep it more for myself but uh, yeah that's probably something what you know keep it more private it's good uh, what, what would be something that you do that you know people wouldn't think that you would be doing yeah, I don't think people uh, know, but I love mountain biking and I'm, I have a one bike and I'm looking <laughs> for another one and it's so dangerous if I fall and break my leg, I probably, it will be a long coronavirus for me, you know, <laughs> but uh, I, I really enjoy it and I try to go at least uh, once, one time a week, twice, now it's a little hot. And um, it's a little dangerous. I go to the mountain and there is a snake. A couple of times I run on a rattlesnake on the top. So it's, you know, a little scary, but I really enjoy it. So well, I that's guess my... that's the mainly thing that there's the little uh, adrenaline we need, right? Just to keep going. Oh, yes. Since we don't compete anymore, so we need, we need something else to keep going. And I guess that's... And especially now with the coronavirus, three, four months, it was like, oh my gosh, what I'm going to do? I need to burn some steam and, you know, get some energy going, you know? So I liked it, you know, very much, and I keep going. And unfortunately, the, the bike, I like it. It's in Santa Cruz, California, and it's on back order for four months, so I have to wait four months to, to get it. Oh, wow. But it's all right. I'll get it one, one day. How about you, Bri? No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not me that people don't know. Um, I like to draw. I like, you know, art and... Uh, yeah, I have a little project that I'm working on, but I don't know that I want to share it. <laughs> so uh, until we're ready, you may want to share it with us. <laughs> when it's ready, yeah, she probably when will. When it's ready, like, I'm close. It's, it's actually something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And so I just, I'm in the final stages of getting That's it awesome. together. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. We cannot wait to hear more about this. So talking about project, guys, are you guys doing anything right now, uh, dancing-wise, in these difficult times for our industry that you might want to share besides that you filmed for us? <laughs> well, say that you wanted to do something on not well, Instagram, but YouTube well, or something. I, I'm actually thinking, I'm planning. Um, you know, I just feel that we've gained so much, you know, with you know ballroom with within the community and we have so much information and you know as you know we've done teaching videos and um i don't know i just i think now i i kind of want to be able to give the information a little bit more freely in a sense and so um thinking to start a youtube page mm -hmm. where i can give some uh tips and tricks you know specific obviously to rhythm and uh, just helping maybe with some of the confusion that some, that some of the students and newer teachers might have in trying to, you know, navigate. Do you, you know, it, so. you know that like for smooth guys, you're more united, more like, you know, together. But with rhythm, we have so many, you know, disagreement and stuff. So now through the coronavirus, we got together with all the champions. Yeah. All the that looks very exciting. Very promising. We right? are so excited for, for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> all the people. Right. <laughs> so we're putting things together. And it's actually been a fun process to like, you know, to meet with everybody and and hear what everyone has to say. And in actuality, there's there's probably more similarities than there are differences. But what it goes back to again is. The, the vocabulary, the words that we choose to use are a little bit different. And I think that's where it's very easy to then kind of, you know. Well, you are, you guys are involved very much in the hip lift technique. So you are the, the faces of this, this whole idea, right? What Sam Sedano is, it's obviously, uh, you know, created and very strongly, uh, you know, presenting out there. So, so maybe, you, you know, you can talk a little bit about that, how, you know, how this project is going. 
Well, I well think we need to tell our audience to buy the video from the Master Agents camp and they're gonna learn. <laughs> they're gonna learn more. <laughs> because basically, you know, that's what we're teaching. I can't teach something else what I haven't done. Right. So I'm teaching even for your video guys for the Master Agents camp and you know, some people like it, some people probably don't or whatever, but I'll basically Basically, that's what we do with Brie for so long, and that's what we're teaching. That's what we believe in. And um, yeah, we don't always. I think we don't always now like feel that we need to necessarily use the term. But you know, again, as he's saying, we this is the information that we have. This is what we believe in, and this is what we teach. That's what makes you a champion, right? Yeah, exactly. And you know, the whole thing with um, I think with the technique uh, in general and creating those videos again, it, it really was, you know, or is for students, you know, and again, for, I think, newer teachers, um, I wouldn't say so much experienced teachers because or I feel like they, they're kind of set in their ways and they have their own ideas about it, but, you know, it really is, um, uh, it's more structured, you know, so I think it just helps in, you know, giving, giving the student specific things in, in order to work on, to make the whole package. And I truly believe every, that uh, every, like what you guys said, that some people might like it, some people don't. We all have the same thing. And some people will relate to the way we teach. Some people will go to Michael and Tony. Some people will go to Max and Tanya. Uh, there are so many amazing dancers, but on the end, this is what made us who we are and it worked for us and it will work for another uh, group of t people that they will follow our way, but there will be always people that they will feel this is not them. And this, that's why I think it's so good that we are trying to bring so many teachers together so people can hear different voices. When we judge them, they know what we like. They can hear our voice, right? And what we like to see. And then they can choose this is what they want to do or maybe not. And there is no hard feelings. And they can get those classes for so much cheaper than the, the private lessons. And they can basically understand what those judges, what those coaches would like to see uh, when they're judging them, when they're coaching them. And I truly believe, you know, we, not, we don't have to be perfect. And we should shouldn't be perfect on all the same way because otherwise we'll be all like a copy of one of right. each other of another and there will be no uh, basically individuality on the floor so so guys here's my question to you what who or what was the biggest inspiration in your dancing oh <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like a like a couple or like a professional couple, or it could be, be a anything. painting, could be something what you know inspired you. It could you the be most something from dancing. outside of yeah. ballroom industry. Who or uh, what was inspiring you, or gave you inspiration to be who you were? Well, I will say for me, this is going to go in a couple different directions. I think in starting out in competing as a professional, I think the person who probably drove me the most was my dad. And um, wanting to make him proud. So he, I don't know, he kind of, I think, became my reason for wanting to get up and go to practice. And, you know, I wanted to prove to him that this was a good choice. And, you know, again, just to make him proud. and. Um, I don't know. I, I think having that is kind of, again, what gave me some drive. And then in terms of like, I would say like really inspiring me as a dancer, you know, uh, the two females that I really looked up to and just thought were so amazing were Joanna Lunis and Yulia, of course. They were like, oh, <laughs> um, just yeah, just love them and wanted to do whatever I can to, you know, come even close to having just a little bit of what they had. So that's amazing. How about you? 
for me it was very clear very clear from the beginning there was always so many girls and no boys so i was like yeah i'm going to do dancing because there is a lot of girls very simple girls <laughs> that was a joke i mean it was a little bit of a part but you know later on i was watching donny burns and you know brian watson they were like you know inspiration when i back when i was back home you watching those vhs tapes and you trying to copy i didn't have the money to afford lessons so you watching the tapes and trying to copy you know <laughs> some of those guys and when i came here you know uh we start working with a lot of coaches so still i trying to improve myself you know but they were the beginning and again a lot of girls you know that that was great <laughs> walk down and open your legs right <laughs> yeah i'm not going to do soccer only guys <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. So obviously that's how you were inspired by the women. Uh, yeah. You know that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, we better do some. We better do some good promotional video for the 2021 Master Camp with you. And <laughs> legs. Open your legs. <laughs> you fall down and you open your legs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, so that's so funny, guys. So uh, obviously, uh, right now you guys are teaching. Uh, do you guys have any plans for the summer? Are you planning to go somewhere? Or are you going to stay at home? I think we're staying home. I don't. I have a friend who rent um, uh, Airbnb. She she helping somebody to you know to prepare airbnb on san in san diego so i was thinking yesterday i was talking to her um to get emma and go for a couple of days at least to go on the beach something different because it's so hot here mm -hmm. so that was uh, one thing in my mind and of course it will happen only for two three days uh but in the meantime just teaching a little bit but there is no more places to go everybody is like a little worried wearing masks and you know it's so hard so, to actually plan anything right because you don't know how the situation will develop you it's know basically day on day normally you know our schedule is so based on the competitions right so we go to from the comp to comp and we'll try to maybe save a couple of days here and there but now you know the competitions keep cancelling so we're kind of hanging up in the air we don't know what to do right i talked to nazar a couple of days ago and he said that usdc it's going to happen that's what he thinks. I don't know, weighing what he. At this point, it does. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think. Because it's Florida, I guess. Maybe it's not in California. I don't know. Because of different states, has a different rules. Well, not the hotels. And the hotels has different rules. So hopefully, USDC happening so we can go. Last year, I supposed to go with Mary, but there was a hurricane and we canceled because of the hurricane. Last year, and I didn't make it there. Yeah. Because. I did your coronavirus who knows what's going to happen every year something so guys we would like to say big thank you to both of you for doing your amazing job of your classes uh yes. we are so grateful to have you guys for so many years before with wayne and now with us uh thank you so much for continuously supporting the mastery camp uh we really hope uh to see you guys in person very soon <laughs> We hope we can make it to us and by maybe by August the latest. Uh, but if not, we will give you guys a virtual hug right now. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> it's a new thing right now, and we want to wish you all the best. And we hope you know you guys will find some time for the little one because Enjoy they grow up so fast, right. and that you guys will able to do something together. Because the only good thing that uh, that virus gave us it's actually possibility to, to be. Oh, our families much more than before we were always running running crazy right and we cannot take this time back with the kids so that's good yes okay. so thank you so much for this amazing interview that show we found out so much about <laughs> you <laughs> we'll be more quiet today <laughs> but i think great. entire world awesome, will man. know uh what that show likes <laughs> oh man uh, it is what it is. I, I, that that's me. I can't hide it. To be ashamed of that. We love you. We love you. You're so so fun to be around with, and we cannot wait to see you guys in person. Thank you. Love you guys. Be safe. Time, and we cannot wait to see you in the U.S. Bye. Bye. Take care.